All right, so in the previous video, we played around with GIMP, um, just getting some simple elements so we can see the process of how we can go from GIMP to Tiled and Tiled to Android Studio for our game. Uh, and in this video, we're going to be covering how to pull that information from Tiled into Android Studio so that we can use it. Uh, a couple things to mention so we started building stuff with Ashley now there are a lot of things that Ashley's really good for I have not found a really good workaround on doing uh, a tiled map with Ashley it still seems like it's better to have it outside uh, of the uh, Ashley system for just the purpose of being able to display the map uh, but I do use uh, use it for creating like level entities and things like that for pulling in into Ashley so that we can kind of make it where we design our levels and tiled and then our code will extract all that information that we have and will build it into our game. Okay, so we're going to have to modify our level collision generator because the way that we have this set up right now is let me get this out of the way is for it to build uh for it to build uh but we have to do it individually so really what we want to do is we want to pull that data and we want to be able to hold onto that data for a long time um and be able to loop through all those pieces so after we uh do the level collision generator we're basically going to go in here and instead of passing in the uh, position the dimensions the body type all that stuff we're going to actually do that um, using the tiled map so I'm actually going to start hacking up what we've previously written so tiled map map and oops let's Import that class. This dot map equals map. Let's create that up here. We have our world, our engine. We're going to have a private tiled map. And we're going to call map. Okay, so before we get to all of this stuff, this is for creating like one body. What we're going to actually do is we're going to pull uh, data. So let me um, do some private strings, private, static, final. because we need to pull based off the names and stuff that we've attached. We can also do it by index numbers, but I find it a lot easier to do it like this. String, and let's just call it uh, collision layer, and that is going to be, now what is the name that we gave? We called it collision layer. Okay, so exact same name. But if we were changing it or we had multiple pieces, uh, that's that's why I'm kind of doing it like this. So collision underscore layer. Okay, so when we get into this map, we pass in the map, we're going to be looking for that data so when you're building this, you're going to have to use um, the same kind of format of how you're building your levels, but we want to get to a, the map layer that we stored in the tiled map. So map layer layer, we're going to go map, the map that we passed in. We're going to say get layers, and then we're going to get and see we can pass by index name or we can pass by string name 
So in this one, we can just do collision layer. There we go. We got it. Okay, so this collision layer is, uh, this map layer is holding a whole bunch of things. So what we want to do is we want to do a for loop. I'm going to use an enhanced for loop because everything in there is really a map object. So I could just call object, but I'm going from through that layer and I'm saying get objects. Okay. So let's import that. And this map object is what we're ultimately using to build all of our stuff. So uh, we're going to end up having to create a class that we can use to kind of abstract out some stuff. So let's go, I'm going to go down all the way to the bottom. And it's going to be an abstract class. Or uh, not an abstract class. It's going to be, a, let's say, like an inner class. Okay, so we're just going to call this level geometry because we need to have some polymorphism uh, to pull data. Um, depending on what the shape is, we want to still be able to return that shape. So I'm going to do private shape, shape. And let's do alt insert. We're going to put a constructor in there that we can pass the shape in. So that piece is done. And then we need a getter to be able to get that back. So alt insert again. We need a getter for the shape. Okay, so that's really all that is doing. So now here, um, we're going to set up for a level geometry. Now this is, remember this is for each, each object. So level geometry, let's just call it geometry. And we can set it initially to null. Now what we're, we're ultimately going to be checking. So if it's a rectangle map object, if it's a polyline map object, polygon or a circle, we want to be, able to pass the right shape but if that this layer or that object happens to be um, we just have to deal with some errors so we're going to do a guard uh, a guard statement so if object is an instance of a texture map object we don't want to be trying to set it up with it because it's going to cause all kinds of errors so I'm just going to skip it if it's if it's that if it's not then we can start doing some of our other pieces. So this shape, shape, I'm going to move that up to here. Shape, shape, body def equals new body def. That's going to be in there. Um, Depending on how you want your game, you may want to, I have them all as static, but if you did want some, you're not really going to have any level stuff be dynamic, but you could have it be kinematic if you wanted it to move afterwards. Uh, so we could be pulling out those pieces. Let me, let me think, because that would be a good way to write it. Okay, let's do, yeah, we're going to do it. Okay, so, well, let's just finish setting up the other pieces. So the body type,
we're going to be pulling from that object. Okay. All right. So we want BDEF dot type and we want to assign that based on what they have. So this, let's do object dot get properties dot get and let's so all of these are objects or collision layers. Okay, I like it. Let me select everything. Can I do that? Add a custom property to it. Let's call it a string, and we're just going to call it type. Okay, so the type that we're going to be passing in, and I'll just pass this in as this file save all so if I click on this Okay, so we're just going to pass in that body depth, that body type, that static body. Um, but then if we needed to change it, we could just change it. So ultimately, we're just all we're doing is getting that. So we're passing in that type. Now, that type is a string. This may not work. Because that doesn't want it. Okay. Let's pull that switch in. Okay, so our Let's do string type is equal to, and then we'll pull this because it's pulling it as a string. And then we can use that and say if it equals static body, dynamic body, kinematic body. Static body. We'll check that that worked. Okay, save that all. Okay, so we're saying if it says static body, and this is actually going to be in quotes, because that's a string. So if it says static body, then we can set our BDEF type. And just have it be able to kind of build based on what we pass in. <laughs> kind of like that. All right. So we don't need to do that then. Next piece that we need. <clears throat> um, so after that, so after we're setting the type, we're going to have to be setting the shape. So if we're going to have a few of these, object is instance of 
a rectangle map object. There it is. Then geometry is equal to get. Oh, yeah. Okay. So once we use that geometry piece here, I know I'm kind of bouncing around because there's a lot of pieces for this. We're basically setting some methods so that we can get the information that we would need. So let's do private. We're returning a level geometry. And let's just call it get rectangle. We're passing in a rectangle map object. And rectangle rectangle is equal to the rectangle map object dot get rectangle and our polygon shape polygon is equal to a new polygon shape okay import that vector okay so we're doing basically what we're doing is for the rectangle we're kind of doing this so I could copy this down because this is our body type just so you can kind of see a reference let's copy that and put it inside of what comment Okay, so we're going to give the size, size is equal to a new vector two, which is going to be that rectangles dot X plus that rectangles dot width. Uh, 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 uh. divided by two and then we're doing our y which would be our rectangle dot y plus our rectangle dot height divided by two so this is still really similar to what we're doing Okay, and then we're going to do, so after we have that, we're going to do our polygon set as box, and then we're going to give it our stuff, so this would be rectangle dot width divided by two. And a rectangle dot height divided by two using the size with our vector two, and we have nothing for the angle, but that could be passed in. Okay, so we used a little bit more of that we gave our size then we also gave the half width and half height and then we gave our angle um, so that was essentially us picking the body type okay so at the end of this we need to return new level geometry and we're going to return that polygon Okay, we're going to do the same thing for circles and polylines and polygons. So private, actually, you know what, I'm just going to copy this three more times. One, two, three. 
Okay, so we have our get rectangle. Now we're going to do get polygon, and we got to pass in a polygon map object. Okay, and then this would be a polygon map object. Dot get polygon. And this would be our polygon shape. Because for a rectangle, we gotta create it into a polygon, but for a polygon, we could just use it as a polygon. Um, but we're going to end up having to use all the vertices. So polygon shape, let's call it polygon. Okay. So with a polygon shape, you have to have um, a number of things. So we have to have our vertices. Then it's going to be the polygon ma uh, map object dot get polygon dot get transformed vertices. And that's going to be the vertices that are on the map. But then they have to be um, kind of scaled for our world vertices. Now, I am no longer converting to using uh, PPM and writing it using potato units. So I'm going to kind of change this on the fly. So we want another, actually we don't even need to do that. So if you were converting using uh, PPM, then you would have something like this, world vertices and you're going to create it as a new float array but it's going to have the exact same length as your other array okay and then you're going to have to convert so you would have to do something like this for int i equals zero i is less than vertices dot length i plus plus um, and then you're just assigning as you're trying to do it. That's equal to the vertices at position I divided by your figures dot ppm. But I'm attempting to write this without having to scale everything. And since it's all fallacy in the pixels, I'm just using potato units. So I'm treating my screen as it has actual meters, what I'm going to be pulling in since it's already created with 16 pixels is really in scale. I shouldn't have to change it. Um, so I'm actually going to just leave this off. But we're going to have to, so there may be some errors here. To do fix any errors. With polygon sh shapes if okay I don't need that all right so now we got polygon dot set and we're passing in those vertices so setting as a box it means it's pretty easy but if you have a list of vertices that's really what we're passing in so I'm passing in um, those float vertices, vertices. Okay, and then I'm returning a new level geometry with that polygon as the shape. Okay, so now we're going to do get polyline. So if they just drew one line and you wanted that as a boundary. That is a polyline map object. And 
not come up with all this code on my own. It's a lot of research and uh, seeing examples of how other people did it to find out how I need to adopt. Um, this one's going to be kind of similar. We're going to end up having to do this is going to be a chain shape so we are still going to want to get a set of vertices so float vertices do polyline map object dot get polyline dot get transform vertices Okay, and this one, again, I'm not converting, so I'm going to write this a little bit different. I'm going to create a vector2 array, and we'll call this world vertices equals new vector2 vertices dot length divided by two. All right, so the reason is um, for the line, if I have just a line or a line and then it say it bends, so I'm not doing like a full polygon shape, I'm just drawing and I stop. Um, issues that you can have is that it will find the point right here and it will give an X and Y and then it'll come down and you'll have your X and Y. Uh, and then when you're coming over, it's going to count it from that point to this point. So you're going to end up having extra vertices when you're designing it. So you actually are going to have half as many because you're not repeating them. So what we need to do when we're pulling the vertices is that we have to go through and get rid of all the duplicates. Um, so we can do that with the for loop. Int i zero uh, is less than the vertices dot length. Okay, so our world vertices at position i is going to be a new vector two. Our world vertices at position i, the x value dot x is going to be um, the vertices at position i times 2 because it's going to be all of the uh, the x value is going to be the first one, it's going to be the third one the fifth one. So we're going to multiply it by 2 and here is where you would want to convert uh, if you're using PPM. But now we've got to get the Y one also. So I dot Y is going to be the vertices at position I times 2 but plus 1. Okay, and you would have to convert that if you were also doing figures.ppm. So that would give us enough, and then we can do chain shape with that. Chain is equal to new chain shape. Now, if chain shapes aren't working, you need to check and do some research on your libgdx version. Create chain. We're going to pass in those world vertices. That's good. Okay. And then we're going to return level geometry and we're going to return that chain. Okay. Our last one is get circle. This is a circle map object. Okay, 
circle map object dot get circle. This is going to be a circle. Okay. Import that. This is not a polygon anymore. It should be circle shape. Circle shape is equal to new circle shape. And then we are going to be setting so that circle shape dot set radius is going to be the circle that we passed in from the circle map object dot radius and you convert here if you needed to circle shape dot set position I might end up making this a temporary vector to and instantiate it with the class so we can save some memory. Circle dot X, circle dot Y, and then we're returning that circle. Okay. So I'm not converting anything. Oops, circle shape. I'm not converting anything for PPM because I've I'm already dealing with uh, that in terms of the size of my screen. So now we have all of those pieces. Good polygon. I don't need that because I can't create it like that. Mm, why are you airing at me? Polygon, polygon, and polygon shape. Oh, done. Okay, and then I have my vertices, which are pulled from the transform vertices. Okay. All right, so now we're back up here into our stuff go away all right so we're building some if statements basically checking so if it's an instance of rectangular map object then I can call that get rectangle instead of having this really have a whole lot of code in it get rectangle and I can pass in that rectangle map object well I'm going to actually cast it because I already know it's of that class. So rectangle map object, the object. Okay. And my shape is going to be the geometry dot get shape. Okay. So now we got to repeat that for all the other ones. So this is much simpler looking code because we're basically just extracting it out of a method to build it. We use that level geometry class to make it so we can just have one assignment depending on whatever the shape is. So if it's not that, it's else if object instance of polyline map object geometry equals get polyline and then I'm going to cast for that as a polyline map object object that should be good and then shape is equal to geometry uh, get shape else if uh, 
Polygon. Geometry is, and then I'm calling that method, get Polygon. Object. Shape. If it's not that, then it's going to have to be a circle. This is a circle map object. Circle. Cast that. Circle map object. Object. Shape equals geometry dot get shape. Okay. And we'll pass in another one. So if it's not any of those, we got an error. So let's log that gdx.app.log. User tag. Unrecognize. Okay, and then we want to skip it. So we'll just log it, skip it, and then go to the next one. So after we have all that, um, now we can kind of start building really similar. So this is where um, our fixture def, we're going to be pulling in. And then our FDEF is going to be dot shape. It's going to be that shape that we just built. Um, we can pass in if we want it to be a sensor. What did we do earlier? We put it as false. We can make it true. It kind of depends on what you're wanting it to do. Um, since we're handling the collision anyways for the level, um, doesn't matter as much if we're making sure where they're colliding, but if we wanted it where they were hitting some type of pressure plate or something to open doors, then having it as a sensor so that they absolutely don't collide with that, um, you could do that. So we can do fdef dot is sensor. And we can put that as false, that's fine. Maybe change that later if we needed to. Um, so you could have this, because we're doing it by level, um, where it's dependent. Okay, so now we need to have our filters and our category bits. So let's cut that. And we're gonna put that here and body body not using this anymore got shape density restitution friction all of those things could be passed in let's move that Okay. Should I already create the body? Nope. Let's create the body. There it is. World dot create body. That's our BDEF. And then we need to 
create the fixture. So this is our body uh, create a fixture. And we're going to pass in that fdef. Okay, so now we could actually start building. So now that we have built the body, um, we can start doing the um, the Ashley part. So we create our entity, and then we are going to have our. Right now, we just have our body. Uh, and type so that would be good we probably are though set body body we will actually want to hold some more stuff now so this body component um, we need to set the user data since we are going to actually have collisions built into it now Get body. Dot set user data, and let's pass this in as the level entity. Okay, since we're holding that body component, that type component, uh, type transform body that's we don't really need to know we want to we want that information so that we can have collision uh, like the player knows that there is a collision but we don't need the level to know that there is a collision that really doesn't matter if you know, for holding that that we're passing the level but we should have a uh, transform component transform component Virtual component equals engine dot create component dot class. Okay. And in that transform, what does it look like again? Set position. Okay. Vector two or vector three. These ones are going to be vector two. So we don't care about the vector three. Transform component dot set position. Go. What's their position set at right now? This would be our well, we can still get to it. Body dot let's get get local center. That's the vector two. Yay! Okay. And then, so we got that. Let's add m dot add transform component. Okay. So we add the entity. Now this we don't want that fdef to hold any information on the shape um, after we get done because we're going to so here is the end of our loop when we go back up um, even though it's instantiating I, don't, uh, I just want to make sure that I don't end up having it so fdef I don't want anything for that shape because we're looking for a different one. So I'm going to put it as null. 
and then I dispose my shape. So then I get to the end of here and I'm looping back up and repeating. So we don't need this. We already set the user data. Mm -hmm. We're not returning though. I think. I'm not returning. But if we want to hold a list, you know, we could do that. That would be easy enough. Um, let's. Let's create an array that we can use just to hold the bodies as we're creating them. So private, that way if we need to destroy it, we're having some issues, we can destroy it this way. So let's just call it um, level bodies, I guess, equals new array. In that body. Okay. <clears throat> I'm saying the type that is going in there. Okay, so let me do it here. Level bodies is equal to here. Okay, so then when we get down to the end, we have our entity, we've created them. We can pass that in to hold on to them. So level bodies.add, and then we're going to add that body. You know what? I don't know if I like that. I do know that I want to hold the entities, though. I'm just going to keep playing around. Ray entity Ashley. Not needed, but I got it. Okay. We're probably not going to need to use this because we're we're going to use Ashley to destroy what we need it to destroy. So level entities uh, dot add. There we go. I like that better. Level entity. So we'll probably not do that. Okay, so we're adding that to the level entities and we're done because we've added that to the engine. That should be all that we need. I got some error somewhere. Or yeah. Not, but okay, that's why. Error is because we're returning the entity, but since we're just adding that directly, we're not having a hold on them. Um, I'm going to make this void. And then we have that level entities if we need it for anything. We can pull and get it. And the last thing that we need to do is we need to have a method for when we start destroying stuff, since this is in here, um, we need to be able to dispose. So let's do for entity, entity, 
level entities, we're going to go through and we're going to destroy each one of them. So if they have a body component equals entity dot get component body component dot class. So if that body component dot get body is not null, then we want the world to destroy that body. Body component dot get body. And after it finishes that, then we want to remove that body from the engine. Remove entity. Entity. So we're destroying the body first uh, and then moving it. And then after we get done with that, we could level entities uh, and then clear it out. Okay. That looks pretty good. Okay, so to review, since this is quite a bit of videos, um, what we did is we rewrote our level collision generator. Ultimately, what it's doing is that when we have this completely set up, um, instead of us manually creating it, we're going to pass in the map. The map is going to pull the layer that we have our data stored for our collision layer. In that collision layer, we're going to be pulling out every single object and then checking it to make sure that it's um, a rectangle map, map object, a polyline, polygon, or a circle. If it is, we're basically building all of that based off the data from the object itself. Um, we also set it up where we can pass in what type of shape it is inside of a switch based off some custom data that we have in our tiled um, that we will also be doing something similar to that when we start building for creating the entities and things like that um, a lot of this stuff was still kind of similar we just had to link it up and make it so that it is pulling that data we did it inside of an enhanced for loop so just looking through every single object and then setting it up appropriately so it's assigning every single object, regardless of whatever the shape it is, it's uh, building for the filter math, the category bits and the mass bits um, for what we have right now. Um, we may ex extract this out as its own little method and uh, rewrite some of this to make it a little bit more simple. Um, but ultimately, uh, we are going to end up having other ones for different types of functionality. Um, for example, my game, I have areas where I want actually the player to stop uh, and the enemies to stop moving, but I want the camera to lurk to a new uh, point. I am using objects that I'm creating um, as kind of like a portal to move me back and forth where I need to be. Okay. So we'll finish setting this up so that we can have it working and make sure that it's working and it's building our level.